drywall and insulation was removed from these black walls. Uh, some shocking discoveries were found underneath. The walls were wet. In addition, the kind of efflorescence that you see on exterior walls when water is captured inside is present here also. Markings on the wells indicating the very strong long-term presence of water. A sponge for an exterior wall. The sponge for the insulation, which this is a blown-in mineral fiber. No uh, vapor barrier. And uh, then drywall, which is semi-porous material on top of it. It's just a formula for mold growth. In order to try to figure out what's leaking in this masonry wall, we need to selectively spray areas and observe the result from the interior. And so we've rigged the spray rack. Here's what the spray rack looks like. In less than 20 seconds, this leak appears. Within a minute, it's all the way down to the floor. The water moves horizontally across this mortar joint, finds an opening, and now it comes down. Three minutes into the testing, water comes out of this joint. Three and a half minutes into the testing, another horizontal line shows up. A little bit farther over, another one. We're just barely four minutes into this test. Now we have another space over here. Directly below it, another space. Other leaks accumulate and grow, especially this one. We can see now why there's rust in this location. The one that started has been continually feeding. Let's see what it looks like when I put my finger on it. See how it accumulated? See how much volume there is? It's a very wet hand. It's probably already put a half a cup of water down into the floor to go into the wall of the unit below. And now we're getting that, that signature pattern where a whole bunch of leaks drip out of a single mortar joint. Maybe the cores are filled solid, but it's very noticeable. Eight minutes into the testing, there are leaks all over the wall. This is water indicator tape. It turns purple when you uh, wet it. So uh, I want to give you a graphic demonstration of how much water is in this wall. For instance, this little drop, how angry and purple it got all of a sudden. Absolutely saturated. This looks like a rather benign little wet spot. Doesn't look so benign now. I don't think we need convincing about this, but let's do it anyway for grins. About, talking about a large volume of water that's spreading through that tape so quickly. Here's our original stream. Let's see what it does with the tape. Oh my god. It's pouring. You see it's pouring right off? This might not look so bad in the camera, but look what happens when I put the tape on it. Solid water. Here's one that seems to be coming higher up. See, it's actually higher up, away from the mortar joint, and look how much there is soaking through there. This tape was so saturated, it's turning white, all of the pur purple's coming out of it. And that trademark look up there, where everything is emanating off of a mortar joint, there we have big areas. On the dead course, we go down a couple of courses, we've got another one, which oddly skips a space and then it's really prevalent in the next three spaces. Well, we know that the blocks have many uh, holes inside them. They've got cores. So back behind here, back behind here is an empty space, and behind here is an empty space. It's a hole running vertically through the block. So there are internal passageways for the water. And this is just what we're looking at, What's what managed to break the interior surface so that we can see it. 16 minute test.
is the metal coping on top. It's saying there should be sealant on both sides. There is no sealant on either side of this coping, so that allows water in there. This also says that carry the roofing up the inside of the parapet wall. That's not happening. There's black and brick exposed there instead. In this area, which is the top of the fourth floor, where all the problems are, there's no through wall flashing whatsoever that would capture any water that might come down in through this wall and to release it to the exterior. Instead, it's all allowed to be concentrated in this weak area where the truss is recessed into the block. The only flashing we actually see is down below, right here. And that is at the uh, floor level of the fourth floor. See here it says fourth floor level. So this is the fourth floor. This is the ceiling of the fourth floor. So there's no flashing up at the ceiling to keep any water, this water, from uh, coming into the living space. The only flashing that we see is at the fourth floor level, not at the third, not at the second. And that flashing is even kind of incomplete because you would expect it to turn back underneath the next highest up course of block and then turn up again so it captures any water that's coming down the block as well as in the brick. So this is a pretty incomplete detailing and the weaknesses are showing in real life. Thank you.